Hey everybody, Renee here, and it's Monday. I'm a little bit earlier today. I am gonna go live on Facebook, as you know, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up, and we're gonna talk about the uh, DSP, the Designer Series Paper, and what's in the clearance rack, how to use Designer Series Paper, and I'm going to be making and showing you how to use there it is, how to use designer paper um, in um, um, as ornamental pieces for your card. And here's some other little things that I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a uh, pumpkin um, here after I've shown all the information about uh, DSB. Here's a um, more of a fall one. I'm going to make a little Halloween one and show you how to do this fairly easily. So that is the uh, towards the middle of to the end of this presentation. So as you always know, I'm going to go on Facebook Live. All right. And so to do that, that does take a few minutes. And so I'm going to go now to my group. And I'm going to go live. And as you know, I check this. I take my hand away. And it'll show me when we go live. And then I'll turn off the volume. And as soon as that's done, we can go ahead and um, continue with our live. And I'm now going to spotlight my table. Hey everybody, I am here. It is early, but I am highlighting designer series paper. And um, I want to show you um, how I purchase it and how I think of it uh, when I buy designer paper. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna show you is um, how to use some of the designer paper. One of the, one of the big things um, that I really like is um, foiled designer paper, especially during this time of the year. It comes in really handy for um, Christmas and Thanksgiving and Halloween and the fall. It just puts a little uh, splash to all your cards. Um, I did emboss this, so you can take foil and you can emboss it, which is very, very lovely. And they do have in the um, new mini catalog, um, they do have um, some foil on some silver foil, which I was just showing you. It's the only place you can get some of the silver foil is in the mini catalog on page 75. And um, it's 12 by 12 and you get, I believe it is um, three sheets. Yes, it's three sheets. And then there is the gold and the bronze and the copper. And those you get six sheets and those are both on the same page. These are the foils. And I really do like the foils. There's also some foils in the um, annual catalog. And in the annual catalog, um, the foil is on, uh, just so if you wanna know, is on page 135 and the one little hidden one, there's number one and there's number seven. Number one, you get two sheets, just a copper and a gold. It's a 12 by 12, if that's all you need, it's just $5. Uh, then there is the uh, $7 one where you get eight sheets. And um, I have this one, which is, which is just gorgeous. Um, and um, I have definitely used it. And I do like the foils and you can see right here, I made this card right here and uh, die cut this out right here. Um, and it, it, it die cuts easily. It's gorgeous stuff. It makes um, beautiful Christmas baubles and ornaments and it does uh, leaves and does all kinds of things for you. Stars, 
All right. And so depending on your coloring, you might prefer just silver or you might prefer more the goldish end, depending. Of course, I feel that silver is very appropriate for Halloween. I wouldn't use so much gold and copper for Halloween. I would use more the silver. So um, it just depends. But the foil paper is real fun. So that's, that's something that I always get and I always feel is important. For me, it is not the main part of the card, but it's what brightens your card and gives it the, the effect. So I'm gonna be making another card like this one. And I instead am going to use the foil as the background. And so um, that was my idea. Of course, it'll be on white paper versus this kind of paper. All right. So um, foil is a big deal um, for me when I buy uh, paper because a lot of the paper also has gold in it. So having that gold, this is the other type of gold or brass where it's not as shiny. That was the one in the main catalog, I believe, and also in the mini. Um, and they're just not as shiny um, as the others, if you can, if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. There it is. See, it's not as shiny. There it is. Anyway, so one of the things I absolutely uh, always get is foil. Not much, but just enough so I can adorn my, um, my cards with the foil. Now, the other thing about designer paper is one of the things I want to show you about designer paper is that you can use it to cut out things. All right. Do not, you know, instead of just cutting this out in normal paper, I have a tendency to find designer paper and use it to cut out for example, trees. Now these trees uh, and this paper was definitely summer paper, but you have to look at your paper and that's what I'm gonna show you. You have to really look at your paper and see, oh, it has potential for different things. All right. And so, um, and definitely you could cut out a pumpkin from the designer paper. This is a back of a designer paper. And look at this. It's just orange. It's perfect to punch out a pumpkin. So, and stamp on if you want. So um, designer paper has a lot of uses. So you can use it obviously as embellishments with the gold. You can use it to actually cut out um, um, things like trees and pumpkins and bells and all kinds of things. Um, you can also use it in terms of when you have scraps, all right? What am I gonna do with all my scraps? Well, you can build, um, for example, a tree. You can do a pumpkin. You can do a bauble. You can do a leaf, all right? You can use those scraps in many ways, all right? Um, extra little pieces of scrap you can punch out. I have tons of punches. I love punches. That's the other thing I love. Probably we'll be talking about punches in the future. But you, you have punches like these, and they just punch out of that little extra designer series paper your embellishments for your cards. So designer paper is really handy and can be used to make basically your entire card. You don't even have to stamp very much. Um, here um, is, um, another, um, is another card. And um, here what we did, and I think you see it better maybe, well, yeah, I don't think I have that quite here. I think I do right here. You see this better right here. All you did is take two inch pieces, there are two inches each of these pieces, excuse my birds, and I tear, just tear. I was just tearing them. And then I made it, I have, uh, it's on a base. And I'll show you that in a, in a bit. It's on a base. And then you clip off the excess and then you lie it. And then um, you go ahead and put it onto um, the card. 
And so this really um, is a, um, a great technique to really embellish your card without having to stamp the entire background, but make it different. And that's what this was as well. This again was torn paper. And this was torn paper. These are, look at the variety in the cards that you can get by using your designer series paper to its full potential. All right, I even did one, I'll have to show you, I even did one for Halloween. Even a very busy paper can be fun, all right, can be very fun. And so all of these are just out of scraps, and then I tear them off. And I will probably give a class on this uh, soon. Uh, but um, right now I'm going to do something a little simpler than that. And so I'm going to show you how you can do any shape. And that's what this is. You can do any shape and tear it. But before we do that, again, before we do that, I want to talk a little bit more about the different designer paper and how I choose it. So one of the things that I like to do is I definitely like to have, when I choose a paper, I like to have a paper that I feel I can use both sides. Now, this is in the clearance rack. It's $7.20 uh, Magic in This Night Designer Series Paper 12 by 12. I love this paper. This paper has multifunction. It's definitely Halloween, but the other side is a tuxedo-like side and can be used as something else. Anniversary, it could be used for wedding. Um, it could be used for New Year's. Here, you can actually color the paper and you could put red in here or you can uh, put another color, whatever color you like. Um, and you can color this paper and it'll change it. It becomes your background, just like in here. It becomes the background of your card. So that again, here it's bats, here it's definitely Halloween. This can definitely be Christmas. Look at this, this is gorgeous. I am sorry about my bird. I'm going to just take a second and close my door because that is Cody. And Cody is calling me because she wants out of her cage. <laughs> that is my son, Kanye. So anyway, so this is that for Christmas. Look at this, this is so gorgeous. But again, it's Halloween. You, you would barely know, because here's the spider web, barely know you could use it for uh, fall. Other side, Halloween, that's that one. Then here is the black side of that, gorgeous. And here, look, fall, a fall card. Look at that, how gorgeous is that? So, the, so when I choose paper, I look at the paper and I go, can I use this paper for other seasons? And so that's how I choose my paper. And this is in the clearance rack. I always check the clearance rack. I always check the designer paper. Another paper they have right now in the clearance rack is this one, which is gorgeous. The reason I like this, remember I talked about silver? Each side is silver on the clearance rack. Each side you would have your silver. You can punch out from this. You can actually punch out from this. Yeah, you might have to go ahead and, um, you know, be careful how you punch what you want. If it looks snowflake, you could just do a, a circle punch out with that big snowflake. Isn't that great? So here is some silver, beautiful backgrounds. So here you get your silver foil. So this whole set on each on each of these on the other side is beautiful. Silver. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And here's this one. Very sweet. 
So, so um, pay attention. I also do that if, if really, I do think that if it has silver or uh, gold on one side um, I, or, or brass or copper, I would definitely do that. So that's another way of buying uh, paper that gives you multiple, multiple um, functions. And that's what I do. And um, one of the other ones that I really think is a uh, good idea is the um, this year's um, six by six designer series paper. It is the 221, 223 in colors. Uh, that makes sure that you have the in colors, which means that it makes it easier sometimes with the new paper. And so um, it also goes with the other designer paper really well. So you can do cutouts and have this in the background. I like having at least a pack of this. I don't use it tons, but when I do, it, it definitely gives a good, um, a good background. And, and definitely you can um, do your cutouts with this and also do maybe some of these kind of projects. I'm not sure what I, I would call those projects. But. So the other paper that I feel um, is, so we were going on multifunctionality. So let's, let's continue with multifunctionality. Uh, the paper in the annual catalog that truly is multifunctional um, is the Beauty of the Earth Designer Series paper. Um, that um, this one has fall, has Christmas, has Thanksgiving, um, Halloween, I have to go look and see. I know they have a wood background on one of these. See, these are the fall. This is definitely fall, definitely fall. So, so you can see those, definitely great. It's a great sheet, let's see. This is just a background. This is a nice spooky evening background for Halloween. Look at that and then look at this. This could be fall, it could be winter because you could have that white, make it wintry looking. Um, and so that's really nice. This is the wood side of that one. So that can be any season. I love for the winter and for Christmas time to have a wooden background, especially with my trees and stuff. So that's very multifunctional. The blue sky, there's a beautiful blue sky. Okay. And uh, I think if, you know, you, um, I think this is almost uh, uh, religious in some ways in terms of that beautiful sky, it's gorgeous sky. And look at that. Now, wouldn't that is totally fall, easy fall. You could even stamp some little berries on here and make it more Christmassy if you like. This is definitely Christmassy. Again, you could add in some little red berries in here, just stamp little red berries in here to make it Christmas. There's another one, fall. There's another one that definitely is Christmas. Right. There it is, there's the Christmas trees. Look at this, oh, is that gorgeous? Look at that, how gorgeous that. It's a beautiful set. It's a beautiful set. Um, and I think that uh, it can be really helpful um, to have. If you have this one pack, you have your entire um, um, next four months set up. And even with that blue for the, for the New Year's, that could work. That blue could work with some silver, could definitely work for the New Year's again. That's why I like to get metallic paper, at least have some around. It just makes it easier for decorating. Um, we just on a demonstrator site, the woman was talking about not being very good at stamping and what could she do? And uh, it's, it's all about using designer paper. It's all about using designer paper as your backdrop. This is your backdrop. That's all, look at that. That's all you need. Look at that. 
So um, that is really great. And so again, how do I use designer paper for my card? Well, looky here, I didn't have to stamp this. I could have cut something out out of designer paper and put it on there instead. But look, designer paper, I can cut that out of a designer paper. Designer paper, similar card. See how designer paper changes, changes your whole card. Same card, different time period. Designer paper. Look at that. Designer paper and cutouts. I do a lot of cutouts. That's why punches are the most reasonable way to go. And then this card opens up like this. So you open up the card and it goes like this and it actually stands um, like this, all right? But um, there is that. And of course I did uh, stamp and, and do a lot of work on this one, but um, designer paper is just what's on the front. Mess that up a little bit. Um, and that's all I have except for this little, little, little saying. Everything else is designer paper, is cut out. Look at that gorgeous card. So you don't have to stamp. You learn how to use your designer paper and you learn how to look at it for more than just a purpose. All right. So I think I, oh yes, the final paper that I think, um, like the foil, I think, um, and I didn't think about this until I got that Halloween paper, but <clears throat> when I look at black and white paper, I do look at coloring it. I do do that, but black and white has it, you know, you could only color like one or two flowers and in a color and brighten up that paper or um, this is the designer paper right now that's in the celebrations catalog. Can you see coloring that out? You can punch that out and color that. All right, and once you have that, now there are coloring tools. Coloring pencils are really the most economical way to go. They are um, coloring pencils that you can actually um, use these blender pens that they have. They, they, and I'm trying to give you the name so that you know what kind of watercolor pencils. Yeah, you, you, definitely watercolor pencils are the pencils that you want. And not all water coloring pencils are made equally. I can tell you that. If they're inexpensive, there's a reason, <laughs> again. I will always say that because, you know, you buy one and then your cards come out professional. I do get many compliments from you guys, which is so thoughtful. And that is because um, I use the, I think it's not me. It's because of the products. It's just like a musician or a skier. It's easier to ski or play music with a better instrument than not a, a, a good instrument um, or good paintbrushes, a painter. You can't use bad paintbrushes. So th those are the those are the papers that that's so a black and white uh, for coloring and for doing many things is really really handy. And as you can say see, it really packs a punch. All right. So that is designer paper, and that's how I um, work with it. Okay. So now. I'm just going to show you how I do this real quick. So like the Christmas tree that you saw, all right, just like the Christmas tree right here, um, I cut out a triangle um, and I take the measurements. This is actually three and a quarter by four. And on the three and a quarter side, I find the halfway point, which is one and five eighths. And then I cut from the corner to that center point. And then I have my triangle and I have my Christmas tree. All right. And then um, like I punched this guy out, I just wanted to do something easy. We're gonna look and we're going to build and I'm going to start, I'm going to do a Halloween. So I have strips 
that are various sizes, anywhere from a quarter inch to a half an inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink this surface. I can get my glue out. I'm sure I will. Yeah, there you go. And then if I do it this way, it'll be easier for me here. Just going to glue this. I don't want to put too much on there. And then I'm just going to start building this paper that I'm using right now um, is the Halloween paper. I just take it to the edge and make sure it's at the edge and then put it down. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go, I kind of alternate between thick and thin is all I do. And I just layer it on here. It's very, very easy, as you can see. So I think I want this, this little purple thing like that. And then right here at the end, even this little spot, and just make sure there's enough glue on there. I'm going to put that down. I have to let that sit for a little while. Especially that tip part. And then, sorry about that. I hope you saw that. I hope I wasn't too low. Oh, I might have been too low. Ooh, I hope I wasn't. All I did was, if I was too low, all I did was lay down, alternating the pieces. And this is the other paper from the, um, that's on the sales rack. Really great guys. Um, this, the sales rack, that Halloween paper has always been my favorite. So let me see. So all I did was this, here's the other color. So you can just see how that would work with that. And all I did was glue that entire surface and then start laying these down and just lay these down until I'm done. And I probably would use maybe this one next again, maybe, yeah, I'd use this one, sorry. I just lay it down right next to each other like that. I think you get the idea. And then my final strip, whatever that may be. All right, and then now that I've let this sit a little bit, which is good. I can cut it. And this is all I do. And then I'm going to get my embellishments and I've got spider webs and I've got um, I think I wanted that um, top a little bit bigger than it was. So I just cut a little bit higher. Sorry, all I'm doing again, I'm out of the screen. Sorry about that. All I did was cut around just like this. Just like that. Yeah, I like that little, see, look how cute. Look how cute. And then I have my little, Halloween stuff all ready to go here. Let's see what I have. Well, I do have a pumpkin. Of course, I could put a pumpkin there, <laughs> but no. There's some Halloween things. Let's see what I've got here. Ooh, I got, got one of those, but I do have one of, oh, I've got some ghosts. Got some ghosts here. See, so you can do like that. You can put this on if you want to. I think it's too much. But you could put that on and depend, you're going to put it on a card base. So you could put that on a card base with a background. And so you could put it something like that and like that. And I know I have a bat in here somewhere. I have tons of bats, but let's see where they are. I oh, don't see any bats right now. 
do not see my little bats, but I did have some. Oh, I see, here they are. I have a lot of, <laughs> I have also a lot of things. Excuse me for my little mess here, but, but I think you're getting the idea. Here's my bat. Here's another kind of bat also. Here's, oh, here's another spider web, which is a little bit smaller, which I like a little bit more. And then you can put that there and the little ghost in here, or your little spider in there. I've got tons of stuff, as you can see, that you can go ahead and you can make this the background of a card. And so again, your background can be some black and white DSP, some gray DSP, whatever you like, whatever you like. You can see here, you can go ahead and have some fun with that. All right, on your card and then your little saying, then you can even use this below somehow and have your little saying there. You can have your leaf. So it is, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, stamp everything. You can use your paper and you can use cutouts. Cutouts are, do make it nice. And definitely um, for this pumpkin, I would definitely use some leaves on here. Oh, look at the little cat. There's a cat, see, there's a cat. It's always fun. And you can decorate it so many different ways <laughs> um, and have fun with it. All right. Okay. So um, this was just a little fun. Um, I do want to remind everyone about the October 2nd event. Please join me. Um, on my Facebook page, and um, it is on the 22nd, as you know, and um, this is for my Facebook group, uh, this information, and just take the polls, and I want you there, and I want to have fun, and if you don't make it at the time that you decided you would, you, it's flexible. I have five different hours. We can do it another day as well. If some game is on and it just hit the time you put in, we'll work around you. Don't be shy and join that um, event, that live event for World Card Making Day. We're all going to make cards together. Okay. One card, one up. All right. Have a great day, everybody, and be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.